Moving on to the next question, Lexi can join in on this, or I'm sorry, Alexa. Uh, Alexa, hi. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, so Elf Song 7133 from YouTube asks, Here's my question. Do you think they will make another game in the art style of Breath of the Wild, or do something else? What art style do you prefer? So obviously, Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask, to me, look kind of like a manga that you would see, especially mm -hmm. the 3D versions of the games. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, Wind Waker looks like a cartoon. Twilight Princess tried looking realistic for its time. Skyward Sword looked like a painting. Breath of the mm -hmm. Wild looks like an anime. So every major Zelda game looks like it can stand out. It doesn't look similar to another Zelda game. So they've all had their own unique art style. What mm -hmm. art style would you like to see the next Zelda game in? Starting with you, Lexi. Oh, me? Oh, dear. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, though. It's all right. It's don't worry. Um, basically, I really do enjoy all the art styles that they've shown in the past. And they seem to be, like, similar but also different at the same time, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. So there's consistency. Um, I... I love Breath of the Wild's um, art style more so than anything um, because it could be used over and over again and it won't really lose its quality. And I kind of noticed that with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask as well. It's kind of an art style will, where it will age with the game and age well. Mm -hmm. um, with certain games where like oh, you play in a more realistic kind of art style, it can age probably in an ugly way, and that might not be enjoyable if you're trying to go back to it. Um, so in f um, future titles, I definitely hope for it to be more so in the cartoonish style, so it will, when you come back to it, it will look very as much attractive as it used to look like back when you were playing it originally. I 100% agree. Yeah. That is exactly where I stand. Yeah, Wind Waker. <laughs> and the Wind Waker, yeah, I was going to say Wind Waker just, like, looks so much better. It has aged so much better than Twilight Princess, even yeah. though I really love Twilight Princess. Yeah, and it looked amazing compared to any other game at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, Xbox 360 games were out. I No, mm -hmm. was it placed? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but around that time, 2006 was when Twilight Princess first released. That was, I believe that was the year the PlayStation 3 first launched yeah so that sounds right there were hd games out at the time like the next gen games but twilight princess mm -hmm. at the time still looked just as good as any other game that year mm -hmm. so i think that's a lot to say about nintendo's work with twilight princess yeah but, but going back now to look at it, yes it doesn't mm -hmm. look nearly as great we're wind waker looks yeah. phenomenal mm -hmm. um breath of the wild for me I love how it looks. I think it just really hits that balance um, art style wise and it just it's breathtaking. Yeah. No pun intended. Um, I agree. <laughs> and so I, if they want to do more games in that style, sure. I would love it. Just I, the only thing is I would say give me more tall grass. <laughs> I love the tall grass. It just looks so good. Oh yeah. Um, even though it, it does like the game a bit, but yeah. um, I, I love uh, the Breath of the Wild art style, but if I could choose my own, art style i would go with the way that final fantasy 15 looks towards like a fantasy almost like mm -hmm. a like a really detailed anime is what it looks like mm -hmm. i would love to mm -hmm. see a zelda game in that style which we've seen something kind of close with the zelda wii u tech demo but that's yeah. running off the power of the wii u where like the switch or a future nintendo console would obviously be able to do a lot more than the wii u tech demo but i found that tech demo in my opinion in my opinion it looks kind of just like the twilight princess art style but with maybe breath of the wild's lighting engine um i think that that was pretty much that balance and i think it looked really good as well that tech demo yeah um mm -hmm. but yeah that that lighting engine just is really great and yeah, I think if I just had to choose one art style going forward, mm, it's a tough call between Breath of the Wilds and how Wind Waker HD looked. Specifically the HD version, because the lighting makes this huge, Wind Waker huge HD impact. Wind Waker amazing. It's so good looking, and it, I, I don't think that that game is going to age 
in a negative way. Like, it, it's going to just always look that good. Yeah. So our next two questions kind of go together. Um, oh, great. Ash mm-hmm. Mooing Monkey 3 says, I have a question. Do you like Sonic games? And then they put first, because I first. guess they were the first to comment on the video. Uh, I guess so. But to go along <laughs> with that, Cludex says, Why do people think Sonic 06 was bad? It was the best game in the series, to be honest. The story and the gameplay touched me. There may be glitches, but that's what makes it fun. <laughs> so, mm. best Sonic game, Sonic 06. And do we like Sonic games? So, okay. I really like 2D Sonic games. I really like games like... I haven't played Sonic Mania, but I really want to get it. Um, 3D Sonic games like Sonic Adventure was really fun, um, but after Sonic Heroes, I stopped playing. I stopped playing 3D Sonic games entirely. And um, so I cannot comment whether or not Sonic 06 is good because I didn't get it based on how poorly it was getting reviewed. Um, And I just never played it. At the time, I really liked Sonic Adventures. Mm -hmm. I used to play a lot of Sonic. I really liked it. But apparently I was a lot better when I was a kid than I am now. Because (laughs) even playing Sonic Mania, I suck. Where as a kid, I remember like getting to like the end of each level kind of quickly. Mm -hmm. To where now it's like I struggle to get to the (laughs) end of the levels. So that's, uh, that's my story with Sonic is <laughs> that I st- I suck too much to enjoy the games. I remember I used, oh, no. <laughs> I, I used to have a lot of fun. I used to have a lot of fun with uh, Sonic games, but I'm just like a decade out of practice. But I do enjoy the 3D Sonic games like Sonic Adventures. Um, I didn't play Rise of Lyric or any of the Wii U games. Mm, but the Dreamcast... 3D Sonic games were really fun for me, and Mm. uh, yeah, I think it kind of correlates with Skyward Sword to where a lot of people complain that they didn't like Skyward Sword because of the controls, but (laughs) if you get past the controls, it's a really fun game, and Mm -hmm. the same thing is with the 2D Sonic games with me now. If I could get Mm -hmm. past the difficulty that I'm having, I think they would be really fun. So I like Sonic games. I never really played Sonic 06, but I have heard all of these stories. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you, Alexa? Ah, uh, gosh. <laughs> I'm actually quite opinionated <laughs> on Good. this. Good. That's stir boy, the pot. Oh we, we've made people angry before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I, that's my last intention, but in my point of view, I am very much for 2d sonic games but once they started approaching a 3d kind of platform it kind of went south Mm -hmm. the camera angles were deplorable (laughs) i don't think uh sonic speed translated as well into into 3d as uh say mario's approach did oh yeah i agree yeah (laughs) i I'm not going to give it the benefit of the doubt because I haven't played 06 myself. I played other titles like Unleashed and Colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually enjoyed Colors with like regardless of what the majority says cuz a lot of people actually liked it just from my own personal experience without learning what that bias was. I just kind of enjoyed it because I didn't get the concept that well. <laughs> um but usually before I started like getting heavily into games, I would just like play it for it because I thought it was like fun. But nowadays, like I play it because I think, oh, this is practical. Oh, the camera angles are helpful. And once I started seeing how much a difference my opinion was in games, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it definitely hit something to me. I did not like Sonic games after I started getting heavily into like looking into games and ratings and stuff. Uh, I love 2D. Good. Mm-hmm. 3D? Eh. <laughs> so ratings are not that great and yeah. Yeah. Right. I yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on. Our final two questions. Uh, oh the first comes from Ali 
Bakar, which really isn't a question, but they say, you are actually a very nice man. I don't know who that was directed to. It could have been Daniel. Probably you. It could have been me. It was you, Jesse. It could have been Andy. It could have been Alexa. (laughs) It could have been Andy (laughs) from McIntyre Productions, or it could have been uh, Andy from Zelda Mm -hmm. and former. So all Mm. four of us were on that episode. Yeah, Andy and Andy. Allie, (laughs) if you're watching, let us know who the very nice man is. Please. Uh, I it bet could it's be Alexa, because Alexa Cause is a very nice man. <laughs> and sure. It wasn't yeah. me because I made everyone angry talking about speedruns. So. Oh, yeah. oh, God. <laughs> we we <laughs> apparently mentioned that we didn't like uh, yeah. glitched speedruns where you're not necessarily beating the game, you're skipping the game. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree on that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have to play the game to its fullest. There are so many opinion. people that was triggered by that statement they're yeah. probably all happy <laughs> you know listening like, i oh, have to say is... i ha- i understand that glitches speedruns exist and there is an audience for it it's just it's totally not my cup of tea yeah, yeah that, that's I agree. what i meant by it like just like it, i get it it's there but it's not for me um, yeah. yeah i have nothing against like those people who enjoy that kind of topic it's just like oh it's just not something i would do yeah just mm-hmm. that's just the simple argument that i have with that <laughs> Uh, but yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get yelled at for giggling too much again. <laughs> no, so, no, giggling's fine. Our, <laughs> our final question goes into a bit of a theory territory. Coming from mm. Eric Garrison. And, by the way, I forgot to introduce her. Everybody, you are hearing a new voice. That is Lexi or Alexa from some of the past she- videos. As a lot of you may have called her. See, Daniel, we brought her on a video. Uh, well, a few, yeah. a few videos in the past. And she mentioned that she was Lexi, not Alexa. And everyone yeah. in the comments purposefully called her Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> there was like 40, 50,000 views. I forgot however many views. And oh, everyone Alexa. was just like, Alexa, Alexa. <laughs> So. <laughs> and oh, no. so it's stuck on the discord yeah but lexi <laughs> helps out and runs the chamber of sages discord Hello. and youtube channel we're on a rocky start because after our hiatus and stuff yeah. but i'm trying to fix everything but that's good mm-hmm. our final question comes from eric garrison who says you know and there are some typos in this sentence, so I apologize. It says, you know, there are, or no, you know, there a detail that eludes. Okay, I think he meant to say mm-hmm. there is a detail. He says, I'm guessing. you know, there is a detail that eludes the theory realm of Breath of the Wild. Spoiler, Zelda mentioned she can't hear the voice anymore because her power weaken over 100 years. What if Ganon isn't completely sealed away? Certain dialogue Nintendo used in both American and Japanese versions suggest they could surprise us all. But if I took a second look to back, second to look back, the fight with Master Koga was a disappointment, and really the final boss fight with Dark Beast Ganon in a lot of ways, and like you discussed in the video, a one-on fight with the protagonist on some level would have been, in my opinion, much more satisfying. I really hope they take this opportunity to give us that in some form with either one Koga or Ganon. Either way, just my thoughts. I like the video. Please keep them coming later. So basically what they're saying is they agree with us that the fight with the leader of the Yuga clan, Master Koga, and the final fight with Calamity Ganon weren't that great because you play through mm-hmm. this huge game that's really amazing it builds up and then you are at the the very tip of the mountain everything like everything's coming to an end there's supposed to be this huge climax an epic battle and then you just mm-hmm. ride around on a horse and shoot, shoot light the arrows. glowy spots <laughs> yes yes yeah and then uh the fight with master koga And in that we talked about, it would be interesting, or the video that he was referring to, we talked about if, what if Master Koga was like Zent in Twilight Princess to where 
you go the whole game thinking he's in charge when really he's acting as a puppet to Ganondorf. So what if mm. Master Koga is acting as a puppet to a much higher person? Well, the he sort of already is. The Yiga clan has sworn allegiance to Ganon. So although Master Koga is in charge of the Yiga clan, he is still kind of a patsy like Zant was already. They yeah. are already But what if there's another in between? Mm, sure. I'd like that because, I, like I said, the Master Koga turned into to be kind of a, a goof. Kind of a disappointing <laughs> fight. And uh, he, he ends up killing himself, pretty much. Um, yeah. And <laughs> I would have really liked a, a more threatening... Like, this is a clan of assassin ninja guys, right? It, like, I would have loved to see uh, a boss that's uh, far more threatening, like, like yeah. we discussed in the last episode. Or um, even, even if it was Master Koga, if he came back... Mm-hmm. And, like, there was some scenario where he was like, and this isn't even my final form. <laughs> where, he, where he transforms. He, he wow. becomes... So going full Dragon Ball here? Yes, he, he becomes Frieza in this situation. Oh, no. No, like, uh, we've seen in A Link Between Worlds, Ganondorf. Mm-hmm. Ganondorf is not in A Link Between Worlds, but... Mm-hmm. What's his name? Yuga. Uh, Yuga becomes a form of Ganon. What if mm-hmm. Master Koga comes back and is able to transform into like his version of Ganon, or even if it's just another person entirely? Like, what if it's the human form of Ganon or something? I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of anything that could make like redeem Master Koga and the Yuga clan. I don't know. I think mm. they just need to replace him with a new character. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not because like if Zant. Zant turned out to be a goof as well in Twilight Princess, yeah. if no one's beaten this 10-year-old game yet. Um, and <laughs> um, if they were just like, okay, suddenly, now he's super badass all of a sudden. It's like, well, wait, what? But he was cool, and then he wasn't cool, and now he is again. I don't get it. Um, so I think they just need to, if they were going to do like another Yiga-centric villain, they need to just do away with Master Koga, have a new villain. Yeah, uh, that's that's my opinion. As long as it's yeah, not I a agree. different version of Calamity Ganon, yeah, like please something wind blight, new, fire blight, <laughs> water blight. As long as it's not one of those. Giga I'll blight. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you you've been kind of quiet on this question, Lexi. Me? What, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm, what What do you I'm, want for a final boss for the upcoming DLC? Ooh, I really don't have exactly an opinion on this, to be honest. Um. Quite honestly, whatever they give me, I'll be satisfied with it because I felt the game was pretty empty. Because, you know, open world, that imbalance. Um, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful game regardless. Beautiful open worlds, but I felt there was a lot of holes that needed to be filled. Um, with DLC Pack 2, I hope for that, but I'm going to be realistic. There's probably going to be a boss that might be underwhelming just the same as the Yiga clan master, Master Koga, and as well as Calamity Ganon and Dark Beast Ganon. I'm just probably going to be expecting the expected mm-hmm. with that. That's that's you know, basically where I stand. <laughs> maybe time for another of wait, Daniel's wait, unpopular wait, opinions. Update. update. Okay. Oh. Ah. Important update. I think this may be directed towards you, Daniel. Uh-oh. Or you could check your Twitter to see if you got the same message. Okay, let me just pull up my old, <laughs> the old tweeter. So earlier we were speaking, we were talking about the Symphony of the Goddess. Yes. Ben, the composer for the Symphony of the Goddess that you've seen a few days ago. I, nope, maybe. Could be the same person, I don't know. But I had a female composer like I was talking about. You had a male poser, composer. So mm-hmm. Ben Emberly says hi there jesse hold on i'm going to read over this to make sure is this this a message or is it a tweet that you're looking at i don't have this is a message it'll be fine i can read it Uh, there's nothing important in here that's like private okay says my name's ben and i'm from the uk i came across your twitter page while looking to connect with people who share my passion for video game soundtracks i'm a composer composer slash arranger with the legend of zelda Symphony of the Goddess concert, which I currently touring worldwide. So it is the person you've seen. I co-authored the new Skyward Sword piece. 
Anyways, it's nice to connect on Twitter and would be nice to make your acquaintance and build a connection here. I'm currently working on a number of pieces based on the Legend of Zelda soundtracks and would be interested in bringing them to your attention. If there's a chance to collaborate with any of our ventures, I'd really welcome a chance to do that. Hope to hear from you soon, Ben. So you know what this oh, means, wow. Daniel? If only we had a, a sort of a venture or something where we bring on guests or collaborators to record with us. But I can't <laughs> think of what that might be. Yeah. So apparently... <laughs> The circle Zelda, of song. <laughs> Zelda Symphony was nice enough to give us some free tickets mm-hmm. to the Symphony well, between of the, the two of us, what was that? Six tickets. Six tickets. Yes, they get. They, they basically gave generous. us like anywhere between three and six hundred dollars worth of tickets. Yeah, <laughs> very so, nice of them. Honestly, you lucky ducks. Yeah. So wow. I had a female composer when I went uh, a couple of or weeks conductor? ago. Conductor. Yes. Sorry. Um, and you had apparently this bin guy. So, oh. maybe next week or the week after we can get them on and that would be have amazing. a follow up. So this Zelda Symphony thing not only turned into great podcast discussions, great interviews, great anything else, but we're also mm-hmm. going to apparently have the conductor on so that's really nice but anyways that is sorry for interrupting you lexi oh no i was like done talking to okay me. <laughs> so with that out of the way i guess that brings us to the very end but i do have one mm-hmm. final thing that i would like to talk to you guys about yeah sure. i don't know how much time you all have left but the video game awards is in three days three days mm-hmm. i think oh man that, oh yeah three or four well, days it's on the seventh seven. whatever okay, day the four seventh days. is Four days away, the Game Awards. If any of you still have time left, would you like to quickly go over the Game Award, uh, the people, the games that are going to be up for nomination, and do a quick prediction on who we think is going to win each category? We don't have to spend time discussing a lot of details. Just go over it and give our quick predictions. Ooh, should I pull up GameAwards.com? That's you what can. I'm doing right now. Oh, oh boy! So you, you both are in? <laughs> All oh, right, yeah. let's I've, do I've this. I've been in deep, actually. I had a meeting about this earlier, so oh. I'm ready. <laughs> you, what, you you had a meeting about the Game Awards? <laughs> yeah, with um with the people I work with. Uh, we were talking about, oh, what we could do for the channel come Game Awards. Like, we're going to be on a group chat during it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Let's see here. All right. Let's. So, if we... Let's go to the awards tab. Yeah. So, if you go to GameAwards.com, you go to Awards, and then go to the very bottom, since the important stuff is at the top. Okay, so we'll just work our way up from the yeah. bottom. Go to the very bottom, okay. and we work our way up to the top. Uh, let's skip the first one. It's best Chinese game, and I have I don't know what any of these are. <laughs> oh well, no, wait, the, the I know thing what Monument is, Valley in, is. In China, like for the longest time, they weren't allowed to have actual consoles there. Yeah. So they had to do their own workarounds. So that's why mm-hmm. they have their own thing. But we can start with this. Uh, we can go ahead and do an intro with it since it will be its own video. So. Oh sweet. Yeah. Best indie game. I'm going to be doing some voice acting here. Just kidding. (laughs) All right. What's up, everybody? All right. (laughs) The videos on this channel are funded by supporters on Patreon like you. If you're a fan of this channel and would like to join on videos, receive shoutouts, watch videos early, have your questions answered, or have your topic discussed on our podcast, please consider supporting on Patreon for these and many other rewards for just $1. Shoutouts for this video includes Link Use the Triforce, Rusty Caulfield, Lovable Christy, Key of Time 15, Shadow to Us, Robbie Morgan, and Lunarium. I want to thank all of you for everything you have done to help support this channel. 